there are specific provisions under the Indian Income Tax Act when there is a sale of assets by non-resident Indians and what are the taxes to be collected as tax deduction at source in respect of the sale of such assets by NRIs. Section 195 of the Income Tax Act is the provision under which taxes are supposed to be deducted. Section 195 requires that any person who is responsible for paying to a non-resident any sum chargeable under the provisions of the Act shall deduct tax at the rates in force. So when we dissect these provisions, what will come up is that the payer has to be any person, right? The payee is a non-resident Indian and the payment is any sum, any sum of money. And the rate of TDS is as prescribed, which is the rates for the specific transactions with the non-resident Indian is undergoing. Section 195 does not apply for the amounts or the payments or the receipts by the non-resident Indian which are completely exempt under the income tax law because the provisions say that any sum chargeable to tax. Now as these provisions of section 195 are applicable to all the payments there are certain relief in terms of the basic TDS that is supposed to be done where there are certain concessions where it has been provided that taxes are not supposed to be deducted in certain situations. Section 195.2 provides that where a payer, the payer of the money to the non-resident Indian makes an application to the income tax department that a sum needs to be determined on which taxes should be deducted then the income tax after examining the application can issue a certificate in this regard to illustrate this say if the sum payable on sale of a property is 50 lakhs and the capital gain in respect of this transaction is just 15 lakhs then the payer of this amount of 50 lakhs can approach the income tax authorities and seek a direction under section 195.2 that taxes need to be deducted only on the 15 lakhs which is the income component in the payment. Section 195.3 provides that if in case if there is a situation where no TDS is required to be deducted then the payee, the recipient, can apply to the income tax department and seek a direction of nil TDS under this provision. The third and the most important uh, provision where a lower tax deduction certificate can be sought is section 197. Under section 197, the recipient of the amounts which are due to the non-resident Indian can apply to the income tax and seek a certificate from the income tax department for a lower rate of TDS in keeping with the extent of income component in the receipt. So in the illustration which I just narrated, the recipient, the payee can approach the income tax department under section 197 stating that in the transaction of 50 lakhs of consideration which I am receiving on the sale of the immovable property only 15 lakhs is my income. So I be issued a certificate of lower tax deduction in respect of the income component. Now the question arises as to if TDS is to be deducted then what is the amount on which TDS is supposed to be deducted? There are various opinions which are 
in respect of this issue but our view in this regard is that if tds is to be made in case of payment of taxes to or payment of any amount to the non resident indian then it has to be on the entire sale consideration suo moto the payer cannot make a tds only on the income component if he wants to make a tax deduction at source only in respect of the income component then he needs to seek a specific direction from the income tax department we have laid down the judicial pronouncements which are in support of the same now we are illustrating what is the extent of tax deduction that one needs to make in respect of different transactions when the transaction is with a non resident indian in case of immovable property the tax deduction has to be on the entire sale consideration or as i said in detail we need to obtain a lower tax deduction certificate the deductor has to be the buyer of the property in case of sale of equity shares if the person who is parting with the consideration has got the details in respect of the cost of purchase and the date of purchase which is much verifiable by them then the tax deduction can be in accordance with those dates and the cost of purchase otherwise it has to be on the entire sale consideration there the deductor has to be the stock broker who is parting with the consideration in case of mutual funds the asset management companies have got the details of the cost of purchase and the date of acquisition so the asset management company who is the deductor needs to deduct capital gains at the rates in force on the basis of the information which is already available to them